Good day. I am Dr. Donnie Jordan from the Department of Agricultural Economics, Extension and Rural Development at the University of Pretoria in South Africa. My colleagues, which I will introduce a little bit later, and I are on the Work Package 3 team responsible for the research activities in South Africa. Innovations that are guided by smallholder farmers adapted to local circumstances and sustainable for the economy and the environment will be necessary to ensure food security in the future. This quote by Bill Gates captures the essence of the core activities of Work Package 3 of the Inner Food Africa project. These activities include increasing agro and food diversity by promoting climate smart agricultural practices and crops, training farmers on good crop production practices, and lastly, optimizing post harvest and storage technology to reduce loss and to support healthy diets. Through these activities, we basically wish to improve farming practices and food diversity. The overarching goal is to promote increased deployment of climate smart crops, their cultivation and sustainable post-harvest and storage practices to reduce loss as well as to train women and young farmers on good seed production practices. Now, let's meet the team. Good day. I am Dr. Diana Marie from the Department of Plant and Soil Sciences. I am a lecturer, researcher, as well as study leader in the fields of agronomy and horticulture. In my research, I focus on agronomic practices that can improve and sustain crop yield and quality. My role in Work Package 3 is to assist in the design and execution of farm participatory research activities. The main aim of these activities is to identify best crop production practices to improve yields of cowpea, bambara groundnut, and orange fleshed sweet potato in small-scale farmer production systems. Good day. I'm Professor Quentin Kritzinger from the Department of Plant and Soil Sciences. My research activities integrate the fields of mycology, seed pathology, and medicinal plant sciences. My main field of interest is the mycotoxin-producing fungi and the mycotoxins they produce, associated with orphan crops. Furthermore, I investigate the antimicrobial potential of extracts and isolated compounds from indigenous South African plant species against plant pathogens, in particular mycotoxin-producing fungi. The aim is to develop botanical fungicides from plant extracts that can be used as an alternative environmentally friendly approach to prevent and control fungal infestation and mycotoxin contamination of grain in storage systems. Most of my research projects are designed such that the findings will ultimately contribute to enhancing food security among smallholder farmers and rural communities in South Africa and also the African continent. In the context of the Inner Food Africa project, I am primarily responsible for the tasks involving post-harvest and storage technology to reduce loss and support healthy diets. As I already stated, I am Dr. Dani Jordan, Agricultural Economist at the University of Pretoria. My research interest in this field focuses on the development and transformation of agricultural value chains. A key area of interest on the topic is the commercialization of underutilized crops, especially on our continent, and how the linkages between activities need to develop to enable a functional chain that's able to facilitate the process from production to offering a value-added product to consumers. In the end, we have to understand consumers' needs in relation to food products and how this cascades down to product development and innovative food products the development of a processing sector and ultimately to what makes the cultivation of these climate smart crops workable for farmers. I'm primarily responsible for the facilitation of Work Package 3's work together with the farm economics and linkages to the rest of the value chain and how the work integrates with other work packages in the project. The research will however not be possible without key players such as NGO partners, students, a site manager, and most importantly, the small-scale farmers and the communities that we will be working with. So let's meet them. An integral partner in our activities is Timbali Technology Incubator based in Mbumbela. 
Tambali coordinates a program that incubates smallholder farmers that grow crops in selected South African regions. Tambali is our conduit for the FPR to work with the farmers. It is important that the research activities include the farmers from the outset. Farmer participatory research, in short FPR, is an approach where active participation of the final users of the research, in this case the small-scale farmers, to the research activity itself enhances the efficiency of the technology that we identify in terms of the solutions and facilitates their adoption. So our role as researchers is to guide farmers on key aspects of cowpea, bambara groundnut and orange fleshed sweet potato cultivation from before planting right up to the point of harvest and storage. Importantly, we as researchers need to take cognizance and understand farmers' knowledge since without a doubt they possess valuable knowledge about these crops, the farming environment and the socio-economic conditions. Our FBR activities will involve small-scale farmers from two areas in the Lowveld of Mpumalanga province, namely Makoko and Mzinti. We look forward to working with and fostering a fruitful relationship with these enthusiastic farmers. Peggy Chigwaza is a master's student doing her dissertation in collaboration with the InnoFood South Africa team. Her main focus in this project will be to assess current agronomic and storage practices and ways in which these can be improved. She has a strong background in the horticultural sector with 10 years experience working with the National Plant Protection of Zimbabwe, where she works hand in hand with fresh produce farmers focusing on export markets. She is excited to contribute her knowledge and expertise towards the adoption of good agricultural practices that will encompass crop yield increase, enhanced post-harvest handling and storage as well as value addition. She believes that by carrying out this project, it will be positively impact the farmers and local communities by way of providing sustainable and affordable nutritious food from climate smart crops. Bongani Muhare is our site manager on the ground in Mpumalanga. Bongani completed his BTEC in crop production at the Chwane University of Technology in 2015. He currently lives in, in Nkomazi, where he has worked on various farms and with various horticultural crops as general worker up to the level of supervisor. Bongani therefore not only knows crop production, but also how to deal with people. This is very important as he will be our liaison officer between the Pretoria-based team and the FPR farmers. Bongani's main tasks are to assist with the day-to-day -day running of the FPRs, as well as organizing meetings and training sessions with the farmers in the Mzinti and Makoko areas. Now that you know where we will be doing the research and have met the people involved, let us have a closer look at the three climate smart crops that we will be working with on the FPR. The first crop is Vigna unguculata, a leguminous crop commonly known as cowpea and also known as black-eyed pea and tinawa in Sipedi. Cowpea is a protein-rich bean crop that leaves nitrogen in the soil and therefore has a beneficial effect on the follow-up crop. Therefore, they can be planted as an intercrop or in rotation and tolerate drought. The cultivation of this versatile crop contributes positively to the food security of many resource-poor farmers. Cowpea seeds and leaves are utilized as food in various ways. The trading of seeds and processed foods from cowpea provides farmers and communities with a source of income. The plant is also used in traditional medicine, such as the, using the seeds for treating liver complaints, applying crushed leaves to burns, or applying a root paste to snake bites. The main cowpea producing areas in South Africa are Limpopo, Mpumalanga, Northwest, and KwaZulu Natal provinces. The production is la still largely in the hands of small scale farmers. The second crop is also a legume crop, namely Vigna subterranea, commonly known as Bambara groundnuts or more locally, Jungo beans. Bambara groundnut is ranked as a, the third most important African leguminous crop after groundnuts and cowpea. The seed contains on average 58% protein and amongst the rural community, the crop is mainly grown for its seeds. They can be consumed fresh, semi-ripe, or as dry seeds, which are boiled. 
The crop can grow relatively well in poor soils, add nitrogen to the soil via nitrogen fixation, and is also resistant to drought. In South Africa, it's mainly produced by rural growers for subsistence. The major production areas are in the Limpopo, Mpumalanga, Northwest, Gauteng, and KwaZulu-Natal provinces. The third and last crop is the beta carotene rich vegetable crop, Ipumia batatas, or better known as sweet potato or patata in Siswati. There are two broad categories of sweet potato, namely the starch rich, white fleshed varieties, and the sugar and beta carotene rich, orange fleshed varieties. In this project, we will concentrate on the beta carotene rich, orange fleshed sweet potato as it provides the body with a precursor of vitamin A. Vitamin A is often lacking in rural poor diets, leading to blindness and poor resistance to infections. Apart from the roots, the leaves can also be consumed as a leafy vegetable or salad green, and it is high in calcium, iron, beta carotene, vitamin B1, B2, and C. Sweet potatoes are not only produced for home consumption, but also as a cash crop for selling on the local markets. There are numerous processing opportunities for orange flesh sweet potatoes, but they are seldom practiced by small-scale producers. The crop itself is known for its resistance to drought, which fits in with our aim to encourage cultivation of climate-smart crops. Sweet potatoes can be cultivated in all provinces in South Africa, but main production comes from Limpopo, Mpumalanga, KwaZulu-Natal, and the Western Cape. Besides the cultivation of the crops, we will also investigate linkages between production and the consumption and marketing of these crops. This includes collaboration with other work packages that are considering consumer diets, preferences, and the development of innovative products. Also, the development of side stream products from waste from these crops, as well as business models for the commercialization and development of the value chain. The first phase of the project will commence with the 2021 growing season around October. During October, we will be planting cowpea and orange fleshed sweet potato on farmers' fields with Bambara groundnut to follow early in January 2022. During the growing season, the crops will be monitored for growth, while yield will be determined at the end of the growing season in 2022. We look forward to sharing our findings from this exciting and enriching study. Mm -hmm.